Welcome to our online service. Thank you for your support to our church and our ministry. Today, this morning, we have taken time to reflect on the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, primarily the Matthew's account or Matthew's statement of the kingdom of God. We have put together also a beautiful children's message and a couple of good songs and uh, I, we, I hope you will enjoy the service. Please share this link on your social media so that your friends and your dear ones will be blessed. Please pray with me. Lord, our heaven lasting Father, we come before you, before your throne of grace today. Help us to feel your presence in the place where we are. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to learn, help us to understand the mysteries of your kingdom. Teach us, O oh God. Bless us, O oh Father. Help us to feel your presence and experience your presence. In Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen and Amen. Please enjoy the service. Happy Sunday. Can you guys tell me what is happening in this video and these photos? in those videos, in those pictures. That's right, in the first one, the farmer was tilling up the land so he could plant corn. And in the other videos, he was harvesting corn and there were people harvesting carrots and even strawberries. Tell me something, would you ever want to be a farmer? No, because it's very hard. You have to like work outside for a long time. Farmer? I get to take care of animals, and it's just going to be fun. I don't want to be a farmer because I, I want to be too many jobs. Yes, because you get to have animals, and do you want to work, and have like fresh eggs when you eat them, because you have chickens, and, and you can have roasted pig. Well then, 
then you'll have lots of food and um, you get milk and sometimes um, you get corn on fresh corn on cob and also you also could get a turkey or two hogs or something so I do want to be a farmer mm, yeah because um I get milk from the cows and I like milk you're a farmer yes Yes. Why? Because one, if we have, if we have a farm that's big enough, I can grow plants and vegetables for the community and grow my own vegetables and eat healthy. Would you ever want to be a farmer? No. Why not? I want to be barman. Yes, because I'd have bunches of brothers and sisters, and I'd have lots of animals to ride on and eat and stuff. Sure, because I want to take care of horses. What? Yeah. Why? Because I want to take care of a, a, a sheep. Um, no. Because I want to be a train driver. I agree with all of you. I think it would be so fun and rewarding to be a farmer. You could grow your own food. Your animals could provide you with milk and eggs. You could share the food that you harvest with your friends and family and community. But yes, it is a lot of hard work to be a farmer. Now in our Bible reading today, Jesus is asking his disciples to bring in the harvest. And guess what? God wants us to bring in the harvest too, me and you. But don't worry. Uh, we can still have other jobs like being Spider-Man or a train driver and still do the work God wants you to do to bring in the harvest. You see, God doesn't want us to harvest um, corn and carrots and strawberries for him. He wants us to harvest people for the kingdom of God. Now that may seem like a big job, but like Evan said, usually farmers have a big family. They have lots of brothers and sisters. And you and I are brothers and sisters because we are all children of God. So we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we can work together to bring more people to the kingdom of God, to share Jesus' love across the earth. Now, how do we do that? What are the ways we can do that? Well, one is, just like we talked about last week, living the way that Jesus wants us to live, the way God wants us to live, and being kind to others, praying for others, helping people out, standing up for what's right. And more specifically, is you could bring a friend to church, or if you're doing online service, you can invite them to come watch your online service with you. And the other way, of course, is just to tell people about Jesus' love and what you know about it, okay? So we can do that, right? We can be harvesters for God? Wonderful. Will you guys pray with me? You can bow your heads, repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Help us to be faithful harvesters, telling others about Jesus' love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful week. Put your hand in the hand of man, still the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you will look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Every time I look into the holy book, I want to tremble. When I read about the part where the carpenter cleared the temple. Oh, the buyers and the sellers were no different fellas than I profess to be. And it causes me shame to know I'm not the person I should be. Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the seas. Take a look at yourself and you will look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Mama taught me how to pray before I reached the age of seven. 
when I'm down on my knees, that's when I'm close to heaven. And he lived his life with three kids and a wife, you do what you must do. But he showed me enough of what it takes to get you through. So put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you will look at others differently. So put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35 through chapter 10, verse 23. And Jesus was going about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. And seeing the multitudes, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. And having summoned his 12 disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax gatherer, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out after instructing them, saying, Do not go in the way of the Gentiles, but and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts, or a bag for your journey, or even two tunics or sandals, or a staff for the worker is worthy of his support. And into whatever city or village you enter, inquire who is worthy in it and abide there until you go away. And as you enter the house, give it your greeting. And if the house is worthy, let your greeting of peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your greeting of peace return to you. And whoever does not receive you, nor heed your words, as you go out of that house or that city, shake off the dust of your feet. Truly I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment for that city. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall even be brought before governors and kings for my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not become anxious about how or what you will speak, for it shall be given you in the hour what you are to speak. For it is not you who speak, but it is your, the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. And brother will deliver up brother to death, 
and a father, his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all on account of my name, but it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. But whenever they persecute you in this city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you shall not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 to 10, 23. The kingdom of heaven. As you go proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. When we study the Gospel of Matthew, the phrase Kingdom of Heaven, Basileia Ton Uranon, is a main content of Jesus' preaching. While for Mark and Luke, it is the Kingdom of God, Basileia Ton Theon. Some biblical scholars argue the fact that because Matthew is writing his gospel primarily to the Jewish audience, this is an intentional attempt to avoid using the word God or Theos in the Greek language and uh, using possible terminological alternatives. Our Father who art in heaven is such an example in the Lord's Prayer. While other scholars argue that because Matthew used the word God in many other places, it is Matthew's theological interest to explain Jesus' heavenly and the spiritual dimension. While others like his opponents, Pharisees with an earthly domain, we know that the heavenly realm is greater, bigger and powerful than the earthly realm. Throughout the Gospel of Matthew, we see the following use of the word, Kingdom of Heaven. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the Kingdom of Heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in Heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the Kingdom of Heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3 Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven Matthew chapter 5 10 Matthew mentions or uh, Matthew and, uh, Matthew gospel community mentions the kingdom of God four times while uh, the community mentions or the gospel mentions kingdom of heaven 33 times and the term Basileia or the kingdom additionally 17 times. In other words, the concept of the kingdom is a central theme of Matthew's gospel. When we talk about it, we talk about the kingdom's authority, sovereignty, royal power, dominion, realm or territory over which king's reign is exercised. The kingdom of God is material and spiritual and secular at the same time. It has its power in all aspects uh, or realms such as ethical, social, economic, political, ecclesiastics and the physical. The kingdom of heaven is at hand was the message of John the Baptist. This is the same message Jesus proclaimed and people truly expected a total restoration and liberation from the powers of their enemies, particularly from the Roman imperialism. This apocalyptic hope or futuristic hope emphasized the restoration of the Davidic throne and the coming of the Lord, coming of the Messiah to renew the world. 
the present and the future aspect of the kingdom inaugurated by Jesus who had victory over the dominions of evil, victory over death and powers of this world. Compassion transformed the the problem of oppression, sickness and evil in the world into an opportunity for deliverance and transformation. The arrival of God's kingdom is demonstrated by the deliverance of the oppressed, the sick, marginalized, outcast, demon-possessed and all those who have received God's mercy and grace. Give it freely to those who are in need. When we think about the origin of this kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven idea, we have the most striking expressions in the book of Daniel. We look at the prophetical writing particularly. I saw, this is, I'm quoting Daniel, I saw in the night uh, visions and uh, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion, glory and a kingdom. All, that all people, nations and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. The God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to others, other people, but it shall uh, break in pieces and consume all kingdoms and it shall stand forever. When prophet Jeremiah says about the kingdom, he says, I quote, Behold the days uh, come, saith the Lord, that I will uh, raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice upon the earth. The idea of Jesus' presence when he talks about the kingdom is that it is a place. It is something you possess. It represents a body politic and it is an order of things, a dispensation. To belong to that community is a privilege. Faith and repentance are the indispensable conditions for entry. The kingdom on earth is a new moral economy of salvation. It is the supernatural life of grace. It is the realization of God's royalty made manifest in a realm which is the church, which was found on earth by him whom the Father has sent and who shall rule and govern it to its final face. The blessedness of the kingdom is the fulfillment of the promise made in the book of Hosea the prophet. I will betroth you to myself forever, which with integrity and justice, with tenderness and love, with faithfulness, and you will come to know Yahweh. I will show him in the country. I will love unloved. I will say to no people of mine, you are my people. And he will answer, you are my God. Remember, the last uh, uh, public statement of Christ concerning his mission is that I am the king, but mine is not a kingdom of this world. The reign of the Lord our God Almighty has began, and it began with each and every one of us. Today, I don't need to tell you the fact that we all live in a broken, divided world, everyone looking for power. Last week, Jesus invited as a community to seek justice and peace. Go as pe peacemakers in restoring and transforming broken lives. The Church of Jesus Christ is in the transformation business. We are living today in a divided nation, politically, racially, economically, and even spiritually. There is less room for love, grace, healing, unity, and more room for strife, fight corruption and uh, discrimination, injustice, intolerance and favoritism are the violations of the right and the rights of another. 
in our reading today Jesus invites us to proclaim the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God mother Teresa a missionary to India a missionary of charity to the city of Calcutta once said I must be willing to give whatever it takes to do uh, good uh, to others this requires that I be willing to give until it hurts otherwise there is no true love in me and I bring injustice not peace to those around me the kingdom of heaven brings an up the kingdom of heaven brings an upside down culture in our own world we are expected to love those who love us or those who have the same status quo but the kingdom of heaven God invites us to love our enemy in our culture the actions matters but in the kingdom of God even the intent of our heart intent of our mind intent matters in our culture we are trying to get to a better place but in the kingdom cult culture we are trying to make our current place better Matthew continued to say you are the salt of the earth let me call that name you you are the light of the world let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven when it comes to the Lord's Prayer it says we all confess and pray which are our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespasses against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever may god bless you with this words may god help us to be the citizens of heaven citizens of that heavenly kingdom established inaugurated started by Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior may we continue that mission the mission to establish God's kingdom on earth by healing the sick by helping the poor by delivering the people and engaging in this world in the transformation business may God help us to do that please pray with me God our Heavenly Father this week we come before you this moment we come before you asking for your grace and your mercy and your help Lord Jesus we ask you that you may deliver us you may help us you may bless us help us so that we may be representatives of your kingdom on earth thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven O God let it come in our midst where there is justice peace liberty freedom where there is God's kingly rule rule our life for God rule our life rule our family rule our church rule our community let your name will be lifted up and glorified we know that more than we belong to this world we belong to our parents our dear ones we belong we belong to you O father you are our father we confess your name and we confess you declare your kingdom on earth in our midst in our life please hear our prayer in the name of jesus christ we pray amen and amen
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Amen and Amen.